Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achana. Welcome to episode 71 of Game Programming. So last time we, what did we do last time? I guess, oh, the sprite, right? Yeah, I think that's what we did. So we had the sprite last time and, um, and our game was just looking freaking superb, right? Am I right? Um, except I think I, well, this, today basically what we're going to cover, and you can probably tell by the title, is, um, well, two things, but one of the things is actually removing, um, projectiles that are dead, I guess, or gone from our list so that we don't keep rendering them because that obviously wastes performance and memory and everything. Um, and also we're going to fix up these angles. So if you, let's just focus on this one at a time. So first of all, angles. If you, if we click, say over here, you can notice that, oh, okay, that's a bad example. If we, click, if we click over here, you can notice that my mouse pointer is like just below the line. And, and you can see here that I can't actually shoot in between that for some reason. Right, for some weird reason here, I can't actually, um, well, I can't angle it correctly. It's like it's snapping to particular angles, right? And that's pretty annoying. We don't want to do that. Um, so let's fix that. And the fix is pretty easy. So one thing that you'll see is, or you might be able to guess here, that the reason it's doing that is because some there's some kind of issue with, preci with precision, right? So for some reason, at some point in time, um, we actually lose precision here. And... In, um, in programming, like the most um, common aspect of losing precision, of course, there are very, very, like there are a lot of aspects. There are a lot of possibilities um, for why you actually lost precision. But probably the most common is the fact that somewhere, you know, your double or your float is being converted into an integer, okay? And you're losing those decimal points. That's probably why, okay? If you're into really, really, really precise things, you might be losing um, precision by using a float instead of a double because a float is 32-bit, double is 64-bit, right? So you might um, you might be losing precision that way, but obviously not here because, well, first of all, we're not using floats, but second of all, you know, that precision that we would lose if we used floats instead of doubles would be so minuscule that, you know, we actually couldn't, couldn't tell. So in this case, it's clearly integer somehow. So where, right? Now, if we backtrack everything here, and I'm not going to waste your time by showing you this, but you can see that in play, you know, the angle that we get here direction is a double, right? When we go into shoot, it accepts a double. It adds a double here into wizard projectile, which is a double. Um, and then it angles NX and NY, which are both doubles. So where's the problem, right? And the problem actually is actually in X and Y. So if we um, control click on X, we go back to its root, which is an entity in the entity class. And you can see that it's public integer X and Y. That's what's happening. So if we go into wizard projectile, you'll see that when we actually add on NX, it's basically casting it into an int, okay? That's the problem. We don't want to do that, right? What we want to do is not, we don't want to cast it to an int when we actually calculate the new position. We want to cast it to an int when we actually render it, okay? So let's, um, actually, let's not do that. Let's go back to our, um, hmm. Let's go back to our projectile over here, and we'll just make a protected a protected double called x and y, and that will obviously override um, these x and y values because it's, it's higher up in the hierarchy. So immediately we get this problem where oh we've got a problem, you know. Um, well, actually, you 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 can actually see that it is over it is it is indeed overriding them because in wizard projectile we instantly get an error. Um, and over here, we can just cast X and Y into integers. And that's all we need to do. So if we hit run, hopefully, and as you can see there, crystal smooth. We've got really, really precise um, shots here. Yeah, we can get everything perfectly. Perfectly right. Now, this is bugging the crap out of me. So you can see that when we shoot, it's like it's coming out of his ass. Well, it's like it's coming out of, well, not in the middle of him, right? So. The way that we can fix that is literally just adjusting this slightly. So maybe if we subtract 16 from both or something, that might help to center it a bit more. You guys can really play around with this, so you can see that's a bit too high up in Y. So I think Y was pretty much perfect, actually. So maybe only X needs to change. Um, that looks like it's a bit too far across. So maybe like 12. So just playing around, play around with this and decide where you want it to shoot from. In fact, maybe I will lift the Y up by like two pixels or so. Um, and there you go. That looks pretty good. Okay, sweet. 
So that's how we fix up the angles, okay? Now, let's do the other thing that I promised you guys that we would do, and that is um, world removing entities. So if we go into entity, uh, sorry, if we go into level, and on fact, where is our, uh, I think it is in level actually. Uh, oh, it will be, but not really. Um, I think it might be in player. No, it would be in mob, yeah. Okay, so in mob we have an array list called projectiles. So these are the projectiles that belong to the player. Let's just, um, in our update method here, which I don't even know, are we calling this somewhere? Let's just check. Okay, we're not calling it anyway. Um, in, let's just do it in the move method. So every time we'll move, it'll be called. Let's just print out, right, the projectiles, oops, projectiles dot size. Okay, so that'll basically tell us how many elements are in this projectiles array list. So let's run that. So every time we move, it'll tell us. So we're at zero right now. Cool, zero elements. Let's click. We've shot a bunch. Let's move now. Okay, there are 58 elements. You can see that as we're moving along, this number isn't changing, right? They're long gone from the screen, but the array list still does contain those 58 um, shots. And you can imagine that if we shoot for ages, you can just see that number going up. And the problem is those things for each of those 421 now elements, right? For each of those 421 projectiles, projectiles, um, the game is still rendering them, right? The game is still rendering and updating them completely. So in other words, uh, actually to prove this, if we go into wizard projectile, for example, and we just quickly print out the um, X position, like look at that, it is still going. It's at negative 6,000 and it is still going and it's gonna keep going forever. And you can see that, well, negative 7,000, that one, for example, over here, we've got negative 12,000 and it's keeping track of all these things. Now, this is very, very bad for performance. Okay. Very bad for performance. And also it's just not good. It's not good for gameplay either because projectiles shouldn't go forever, right? They should stop. So let's talk about how we can make them stop. Okay. Now to make them stop, we basically need to define a range. That's how I like doing it. Okay. I just say basically that, oh, well, if it's traveled, you know, X amount, if it's traveled X amount of tiles or whatever, you know, if it's traveled like, let's just say 200 meters, that's it. Like it should just disappear. Okay. So we can just play around with that. Um, and then obviously that's how we can get different ranges as well. For example, you know, some weapons might have a range of 10, some weapons might have a range of 5,000, who knows? Um, so we can really get some, um, really nice gameplay elements in with that. Without rules. So for that, we need to basically keep track of the distance. So protected double distance. And the distance is going to be the, dis the, the, the distance from the origin that um, our thing has traveled. So over here, let's just make a method, not calendar. Why on earth would we want a calendar in here? <laughs> calculate distance, okay? And this will literally just calculate the distance. And in fact, I am going to make this an integer. So let's just um, print it. So we can print distance plus calculate distance, right? So let's create method and it will be an integer. Okay, so, um, double, oh, actually, no, it won't be. It'll be a double, not an integer. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so double distance will set equal, we'll just make that equal to zero for now, and we'll return it. Okay, so how do we calculate the distance? Okay, so we can use Pythagoras theorem to do that, and you guys should um, be aware of how that works. Um, if I ever get around to making that in-depth series, um, actually I might soon because I, uh, I'll talk about that later. But um, if I do get around to doing that, I'll explain how that works, but it should be fairly self-explanatory. So the distance, of course, is the, is the square root of the um, opposite side of the angle squared plus the adjacent side of the angle. So we can use math.square root um, the uh, opposite side, so in other words, well, we can just really use the, um, the distance here. So x origin, x origin minus x, so that's how much it's gone. And in fact, let me think, we really should absolute this as well, shouldn't we? Oh, we can just probably do that at the end. Oh, we might get a square root of a negative number. Yeah, let's okay, let's absolute let's absolute it now. So we don't we don't want any imaginary numbers here. 
So we can, um, I'll just do this. This is the same as squaring, right? I'm just multiplying it. Um, uh, plus uh, the same thing for the y. All right. So what this will hopefully do, if I don't forget any brackets, what this will hopefully do is actually give us the distance. So um, let's just hop into here. Let's get rid of that extra semicolon. Let's hop into here and let's just check that out. Okay. So that's work. Uh, it is working. It's just that the problem is that there's multiple um, entities. But yeah, it looks like it's working. Okay. So what we could do now is um, that is the mass behind it, by the way. It's just pretty much you know, the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? But I'm just getting the um, the actual distance here. So now that we've got that figured out, um, what we can do now is just basically say that if our distance, in fact, instead of calculate distance, I might just rename that because it was a, it was originally made a, uh, it was originally meant to be a void method. That's why I named it um. That's why I named it calculate distance. But since it's going to return something, I might, might as well just call it distance. Oh, for frick's sake. Okay. Distance. Okay, sweet. So, um, what, we, what, what we can say now is that if distance is greater, right, than, than our range, then essentially, let's just remove it. Let's remove that element. And that seems to work for some reason. So, we need to remove it from, from level. So, how do we remove an element from a level, okay? That is the big question. Um, well, the way that we do that in, in our case is we just really need to remove it from our projectile list, yeah? So what we need to do is we, we need to basically say that if we remove a particular element, we need to just remove it from our, let's go back to mob, we need to remove it from our projectiles list. So how do we do that? Um, there are several ways of doing that. Um, but the way that I'm probably going to show you guys how to do this is going to be, um, well, I guess the easiest to probably explain. So what we can do simply in mob is we can just, um, have a method and the reason that I'm doing it this way is actually because it will universally just clean up our, our entire game. So in update, there is an update method here that we're not actually calling, right? So we should be calling it. Um, and the reason that we're not calling it, well, the, the reason that we're kind of not calling it here is because it's actually being overridden by player. So that's really the issue here. But um, what we should... So we can't really do it here, but where we should do it is probably in um, in our player class. So in our player class, since you know these projectiles do kind of belong to player, we can just um, make a method here called um, clear, right? And let's just create that method here. Um, and in clear, right, all we'll do is um, we'll just say that uh, sorry for in i equals zero, i is less than our projectiles dot size I plus plus so for all the projectiles right all we'll do is we'll say um, we'll just make a projectile p called uh, projectiles dot get i right and we'll just say that um, you know if p dot is removed right which we conveniently have a method in our entity thing called is removed and that returns removed um, uh, we can say that if if it's removed, right, then um, projectiles dot get sorry projectiles dot remove i, okay, simple as that. And what that should do is essentially remove our projectiles from our screen. So let's let's just try that out quickly. All right, we can't really tell here, but if we go into the size of our um, thing, so in mob, if we just get back to Printing so size plus projectiles dot size. If we get back to printing this, then you can see that our size is actually zero right now. So it stays like that and then gets removed. So that range is actually pretty long. So let's change that. Let's go back into and um, just to emphasize this, I'll make this. Let's unimport calendar. God. <laughs> Let's change the range to like 20, right? So that should be pretty damn low. Um, 
Okay, right? So the size of our projectiles thing is getting a lot less, which is pretty damn awesome. In fact, we're zero already. So if we change the range to something like two, um, then we should really just be getting back to zero straight away. Okay, so even though our size says zero, for some reason, they are actually still being rendered. So let's go back and fix that. Um, if we go into, well, first of all, where are they getting rendered, right? They're getting rendered in, um, okay, so let's just quickly check out where this method is actually being called. So references workspace in level to render. Okay, so, oh, okay, I see. So it's just rendering entities. Um, mm, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, so I can definitely see why that's happening. Um, the reason that this is happening is because it's, it's, um, it's not actually removing it from the entity, it's removing it from the projectiles, but it's not removing it from the entities. So what we should really do here is probably reconfigure this game to, um, to uh, have projectiles separate from entities, because if we do have them as entities as we have now, they kind of screw up, right? So, um, We'll talk about fixing that next time, just because that's going to take a while to actually rewire everything. But I hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit the like button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new episode. Later, guys.